Hi, and welcome back to this new episode of Engineering, or just welcome. It depends if you survive or not the first one, not as my plant here. However, in case you didn't see it, link in the description below. So, Pierre Ryu, we introduced it in episode 1, and today we will have the chance to discuss it a bit better. First of all, what is Pierre Ryu? PNRU, or photoresponse non-uniformity, is a scant and invisible residual introduced by the sensor of device we are using every time we take an image or we record a video, and its uniqueness is due to all the aleatory processes that occur during the manufacturing of the sensor itself. For instance, it could be also the amount of dust that falls over the sensor or the level of humidity that we have in the room in which we are producing it. As a consequence, all these little tiny differences that occur during the manufacturing process of the sensor makes of the PNRU a unique fingerprint that can be recovered in each of the media you take with your device or with your camera and then can be used to compose a unique camera fingerprint in order to compare it then with other PNRUs to prove their provenance. The conventional method to extract PNRU requires that you first of all apply a wavelet to the noiser, followed by a zero meaning by row and columns, as we said in episode 1, and in the end a vinyl filter in the FT domain. And if you feel interested to play with PNRU extracting it from your images or video, I will leave in the description below two links, one that will bring you to the MATLAB PNRU libraries developed by the original authors of this paper, and another one to the Python libraries developed by a resource group of the University of Milan. Another possible approach, other than the one for source identification, however, is the one to imply the camera fingerprint on the PNU for tampering detection. And a method that I would like to introduce today and maybe better discuss and compare it in the next episode is the Bayesian MRF approach developed by Chierica, Poggi, Sansone and Verdoliva. In this paper, the authors propose an extension of the original work of Gaussian and Friedrich using the PNU for tampering detection. However, they formulated the problems in terms of Bayesian estimation, modeling the prior probability with marker random field in order to have local statistics of the image, and then using a non-local denoising filter in order to preserve the PNU in textured area, which is actually a problem for the conventional filter that is not really able to distinguish the contribute of the PNU from others in presence of textured area. This thing, however, doesn't happen for flat ones, and flat ones are recoverable in image, for instance, of blue or cloudy skies. In this case, the conventional filter is able to do its best and to well separate the PNU without any problem to the other contributes. So, a little tip, if you are planning to play with PNU and to compose your camera fingerprint, to stay in the best possible scenario and condition ever, just use flat images of blue or cloudy skies and then use uh, these images to compose your camera fingerprint and to compare it with other PRNU of natural image, in which with natural image we refer to all these images taken of random scenario, for instance the park, your room, whatever. However, this work is particularly interesting because yet in 2014 touched some of the criticality that I'm going to discuss right now. Due to spatial transformation, filtering, AI post-processing and more in general in-device or out-device post-processing that we apply every time to our media taken with a certain device, PNU is today more than ever compromised. For this reason, even for media coming from the exact same device, it's really difficult that we can compare the two PNUs of these ones straightforwardly, but that we need to resynchronize one with respect to the other. Luckily, the research community already developed some of these methods aimed at inverting spatial and non-spatial transformation. A first example came from the exact same authors of PNU, which developed pipeline working on the problem of image processing. Instead, other authors, as Giuliani, Memon and Mandelli, works on other problems due especially for video, such as the one of video stabilization. Another thread for PRU nowadays is its loss of uniqueness, and this was well exposed in one of their last publications by Giuliani, Piva and Fontani, in which they show that by extracting PRU from media coming from brand new device, this one exposes no unique correlation pattern, maybe due to in-camera post-processing. Therefore, it's important today more than ever understanding if the pipe and the filter that we use to extract PNU are becoming obsolete and so we need to update somehow this pipeline or if it's time to look for actually new PNUs. 
So, Hippon for today is everything. We answer some questions coming from the present episode, but new ones arise and we will try to answer in the next one. As always, additional material and paper are in the description below. Instead of doubts and comments, go in the comment section. So, coach in the next one.